All right, and welcome back to another episode of the Gamers Grind Podcast. How is everybody doing today? Pretty good. Can't complain, man. Nice, nice. I want to fight him. What? I, I just want to, like, David and Goliath fight, but I'm Goliath. Boxing gloves. But I'm Goliath. But, yeah. <laughs> what? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you Goliath? Uh, there's no reason. There doesn't need to be a reason for anything. Do you need an answer for everything? You're not I good. actually don't like you. You're I don't not, like you either. That's oh we're going to fight. All right. Welcome, welcome, everybody. We are back with some more of the Gamers Grind podcast. We are on episode seven of the podcast. That means there are six more episodes that you guys either have checked out before or haven't had the opportunity to see. If you guys want to check those out, uh, you can definitely check it out on the YouTube channel, The Gamers Grind, where we do post all of our episodes on there. And this episode will be uploaded to the YouTube uh, very so very soon. But other than that, uh, let's get into it. It's been a pretty good week. Uh, a couple couple announcements, couple good couple announcements, uh, a lot of little presentations, and I'm very excited for what's to come. I'm super excited for what's to come. Uh, if you guys remember earlier last week it was about like 9 a.m. in the morning. Nintendo hits us with the Pokemon Presents. My favorite. Yeah. Is it really now? Once again, dude, I just got into the <laughs> franchise. Like I just got into the franchise like maybe like a couple months ago. When I was like, wow, this is actually pretty good. But I'm definitely gonna buy the uh, the new the new remakes of uh, Shining Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl. I'm buying them. And I'm buying both of them. I'm not going to lie. Pokemon was kind of hard to get into. I know, like, a lot of people, they just jump right into it. But I don't feel like I really got into Pokemon until, like, I don't know. It was a while. Because <laughs> it was always around, especially in, like, when I was growing up. Everybody had Pokemon. You wouldn't yep. see a Game Boy without Pokemon in it. <laughs> like... That was how popular it was, but I never, I couldn't do it because I didn't understand RPGs. I was big dumb. <laughs> and I, I walk in grass and I'm like, why am I being stopped every five seconds? And I hated it and I didn't like playing it. I, I played Mario Brothers Deluxe instead on my Game Boy Color. No, it's really hard. That doesn't make sense. I, I think my, so I have like, I have two different introductions to Pokemon. Two different introductions. Um, originally, I had never, I had never played one of the, I had never played one of the games. It was around like second or third grade. I, my dad, he since he didn't live, since he didn't live with us, uh, he said for your birthday, I'll, if you get uh, for your birthday, I'll get you something. He said if you get good grades, and I'll give you a nice gift on your birthday. And I asked for Pokemon Emerald. I did not get Pokemon Emerald, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I never got, although I never got Pokemon Emerald, I think, you know, I would play, I would often hang out with friends. We all bring our Game Boys to Game Boys to school and call it a day. I remember that a friend had, had Fire Red, had Fire Red on the Game Boy and said, hey, we don't really play this game. I don't really want it. So they gave me they gave me Pokemon Fire Red. Uh, and that was probably my first time ever playing a Pokemon game. I think I played it for like a little bit of like I want to say like a I played it for a couple hours, but because I was like 8 or 9, I had the attention span of a of a peanut. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would just play it for a bit and then I just like put it away or I lost it and I couldn't find it. Uh and then, like, let's fa we fast forward to, I want to say, like, fourth grade? Fourth or fifth grade. That was that was around the time when the Nintendo DS was, like, coming out or was, like, there. And I got Pokemon Diamond for the first time. Now, that was my, uh, that was, like, the actual first Pokemon game I ever played. And, you know... That game, I love that game. That is a, that that was such a that was such a fun experience because 
I would start with start bringing my DS to school, start bringing my DS to school, play play with uh you know, play play the game, go through the story. Then I would find my friends who would also bring the DSs to school. Mind you, we weren't supposed to play with the DSs in class. We weren't, but we made we made it work somehow because kids are crafty. So we just snuck our DSs to, the, to like after school care. We played with each other and like we were trading, we were battling, and it was just a it was just such a fun time all around. And I love Pokemon. Like I'm not the I'm not the most vocal fan of it. But I have, I have played every entry. I have beaten every entry since like the of like the main lines of the mainline games, aside from Sun and Moon because I just can't bring myself to do it. I don't know why. I think I've beaten all of them except Gen three and four. I can't bring myself to play Gen three, and I really don't know why. There's just something that's really kind of off putting to me about it, and I really. I, maybe I don't even have a reason, and I just haven't played it. And then Gen 4, I played through, like, a good bit of it, but I never finished it for some reason. I think I may have just forgot about it or something else came out. But um, I played a little bit of it, like, enough. Mm-hmm. So I have, like, some experience with it. And I know why people like it. The music is great. I'll just start off saying that. Like, the um, the lake area, I forget exactly what it's called, but when I heard that, I was just like, man, this game's music is already great. Oh my God. But then, uh, as far as the gameplay, it was just kind of like, I feel like I've played so much Pokemon at this point that going back to play that one and <laughs> not having that nostalgia there, I was just like, all right, kind of just playing Pokemon again. Yeah, mm. I, I can agree. I think, I don't know, I have a lot of friends who, like, who love Pokemon and are able to go back to the older games. I've always kind of felt like, once I've had my like, once I've had my fill with the Pokemon game, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I, it's very hard for me to go back. The only exception for me was Pokemon Platinum because that game was insane. Probably the best Pokemon game. Did that, you say I, Platinum? Platinum. I think Platinum oh, was amazing. Okay. I think Platinum was. I think Platinum was the best Pokemon like mainline Pokemon game to ever come out. That was so good. That game it it, it built upon the formula. That black, not that black, that diamond and pearl set, it built on that formula. It may, it improved on a lot, on so much. It improved on so much. It added new content. It kept you coming back because you have the mystery gift events and new story things that would come up. And I liked that a lot. Uh, I liked that so much. I guess the only like complaint. Which it really isn't a complaint because it got fixed over time with the next next installments. It's a little bit slower. It's a little bit. It's a slower game. A slow, slower game because I know like around like black and white. That's when they actually like they sped up Pokemon. They're like, oh wait, we battles can be fast. But um, aside from that, that game is actually goaded, and I am just I love Pokemon, but I bring. <laughs> But I bring it up because we did have the Pokemon Presents, if you guys don't know. Uh, Pokemon Presents is a Pokemon-specific direct that the Pokemon company likes to do. There, they like to give us an update on what's to come for the franchise. And they, they gave us they gave us a, a couple things. Nothing too, gra- nothing too groundbreaking. Um, it was mostly titles that we already knew. Uh, they, they talked about some updates to Pokemon Unite and Pokemon Go. They brought up, they talked about a a new version of Pokemon Cafe Mix, which I know nothing about. I know <laughs> zero about that game. I'm pretty sure it it probably bangs. That game probably is probably amazing, but I know nothing of it. Um, and then you know, and you kind of just skipped over those because you're just like, yeah, Unite, pretty cool. Maybe they had a good update. If you're a Pokemon Go fan, I know there's I know that market is crazy for that game. But we weren't look, we weren't looking for those games, you know. That's not why we were watching that direct. There were two games that we wanted to hear about. And it was Shining Diamond, Shining Diamond, and Brilliant. No wait, it's Brilliant, brilliant. Diamond. Shining. shining. No, I don't. I don't know, and I'm not gonna. I ask don't know them. <laughs> so yeah, I just call it Diamond and Pearl <laughs> remake. That's They're such strange names. That I it's Diamond and Pearl remakes. The Diamond that, and Pearl there remakes. we go. 
There we go. Because I, I do not care. <laughs> I just saw the trailer for, what, Arceus? Oh, yes. And then Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, that game... That's a video game. That, that is, is a, a video game. That is a nice-looking video game. I, I it's was, a lot better than what I started off as. Remember when they, yeah, they showed it off? I was to say that. I was, like, I was actually worried. Because I saw that initial trailer, and I was like, man, that Pokemon is not running at... <laughs> he was, like, running at two frames compared to everything else. <laughs> and I, I was just like, this game is not ready. I was like, is, is this going to be how it is? Knowing Game Freak and the way that they code things. Sword and, the shield, they, and the way how Sword and Shield was. Sword and Shield was this. Well, I'm bonus. talking about like the way they, they coded Gen 7 and some of the really questionable decisions they made. Yes. And then I saw that and I was just like, no. I was like, it's going to happen again. And then I seen that new trailer and I was just like, this, this actually looks kind of nice. It looks really nice. Like I, I just watched the entire thing. I was like, oh my god, this some now I actually care. Like that's before what I was from Gen Eight, yeah. honestly. That, that, now I care, you know. Open world experience, you get to go around. Machoke is pissed. Uh, <laughs> the bear is mad. I don't know all the Pokemon's names. If you're not talking to me about Gen One, well, Gen One two and get that shit out of my face. I, I don't know any of the Pokemon's names. The so bear was like, mad. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's why it's so. This is like one of the first subjects I've talked about where it's just like, I know about Pokemon, but I'm not going to be like the absolute war master of Pokemon. Let's just put it that. Like, I played all the games, but I only enjoyed them like casually. And I feel like Pokemon fans, there's like a spectrum kind of like how much people enjoy Pokemon games. And some people are just like, you got those min max types and. I don't know, there's, there's just so many degrees of Pokemon fans out there. And I feel like I wouldn't be a good enough one. I just like the, the experience. It's like I play the game once and then I never touch it again, usually. Unless it's Gen 2. I really like Gen 2 a lot. Um, I agree wholeheartedly, I agree wholeheartedly with you. Um, I'm not... Growing up and like just playing, just playing the franchise, I've never really been one to go really in depth on like in depth on the game like at some point i, I kind of remembered a lot of the names but like the most recent entries there's just so many and i'm just like i can't remember everybody then there's, <laughs> all the, i can't i can't remember everybody then like there's all the abilities all the items and that can get that can be that can definitely spiral into like this whole new world of whole new world of things i remember i uh I did a Nuzlocke, a Pokemon, Pokemon, what's the recent one? Yeah, let's look at Pokemon Red. What, no, 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 what's the, what's the or... most recent one? What, the most recent Sword one? Shield, Sword and Shield, Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield. Oh my god, it's, it hasn't even been that long. Um, I did a, yeah, so I did a, a Nuzlocke, a Nuzlocke of Pokemon Shield or Sword, I don't remember, but um. I did the Nuzlocke, and that was, like, the first time I actually had to, like, understand what I was doing with Pokemon. And, like, <clears throat> while it was fun, it was so much. It was so much, like, preparing, knowing what, what abilities these guys have, what Pokemon I need to prepare with, what abilities I, these guys have, how to, like, play in, like, the o like, you have to play, like, the OG set style where, like, you couldn't... You couldn't switch out a Pokemon original, like in between. Like, you knock out a Pokemon, and they usually ask you if you want to switch your Pokemon. In this set style, you play it like traditionally, where you don't get free switches. So you had to like think about, oh, when should I swap out this Mon to go into the the correct Mon? All these little things, and like, I like Pokemon. That was that Nuzlocke was really fun. I don't think I'll do it again. I don't need to go do it again. It's very, it's a lot, it's a lot. But, get back into what we were, to, uh, back to Arceus. That game has me excited. It, it really is going a very, a very brand new direction that I'm pretty sure no no Pokemon game has ever gone before. It's, it's trying to, it's, it's, it's open world. I mean, it, it's, it's like that open world experience. Battles are not the same, are not necessarily the same 
traditional battles that you're doing where you're just, hey, fight I'm fighting you, here's my moves, choose my moves. Yeah. Haha. Uh-huh. It's you're you're doing attacks based off of it it, it the speed it looks more like you're Play it looks like, more like a traditional RPG to me. There we go. In, in all honesty, that sounds really dumb, like saying it out loud. But it's just like, yeah, but it, it is. It definitely. I, but I, is. it's like Pokemon is so simple that it almost sort of just like it doesn't really take me out of it. Because of course, there's a lot of depth to it. Of course, anybody can tell you that. Like the freaking people who play it competitively, but like. When I seen the Lucario fighting, I don't remember, and then it was like it had that speed list of just like the uh, the turn order, and I was just like, oh man, <laughs> it's like that's new. And then it like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that they added that looks super cool to me, and I'm just like, oh man, I could actually get into this now because I could play it like I could play like any other RPG instead of just being like, I got these four moves. I mean, you still got the four moves, but you could like. I don't know. <laughs> it's so hard to explain, but it's just weird being so limited in Pokemon games they that it doesn't really interest me that much. No, you're absolutely correct. I think that they're they're going with like a lot of different they're going with like a lot of different like mechanics adding in. Like when I watch that trailer, I'm like, am I? I'm looking at Monster Hunter. Then I watched the battle system. I'm just like, that's Octopath Traveler or Final Fantasy X battle system. Yeah. Like speed is it? Yeah. Speed is everything. Uh, the exploration, the exploration is like, oh, it's not necessarily a story. It's not necessarily a story game. It's a game about like enjoying. That's 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 giving me vibes of Breath of the Wild. I mean, like every open world game, it's like Breath of the Wild. Uh, <laughs> because um, at every open world game is Breath of the Wild. Facts. All of them. And then, all of them. And then, like they're doing it in this, this like old, this old, like I don't know what the period, like Edo period, like style. It's it's very it's very stylistic. I love the idea of this is like when it's way before Pokemon, where ever like. It's way before Pokemon were like a sta- a staple in like a family household and stuff like that. That they were like they weren't just people weren't capturing Pokemon at that point. Or it's very the wild cool. creatures out in the out in the about trying to eat you. They'll They're kill dangerous. you, bro. They, they, they'll they'll kill you. They don't. Some of the Pokemon logs <clears throat> on there is straight up nightmare fuel. You mean to tell me if Jigglypuff actually sings in the room with me, I never wake up? What? I, that's my I mean, favorite. Coma part. forever. Pokemon lore is like the the best part of it to me. Like e- even in that trailer, they were like, "Askew Legion evolves by evolving with the souls of its friends." <laughs> it's like <laughs> the the souls Askew of Legion its all- comrades. And I was just like, I like this. <laughs> I was like, I I love like just reading Pokédex entries, and I'm just like, why is this this way? Like I. It, I have the hardest time thinking about Pokemon doing half the stuff these entries say, like eating each other <laughs> or things like that. Because I just look at the designs and I'm just like, wow, this Magikarp gets eaten <laughs> like by numerous things. Or like how people eat Slowpoke tails and stuff like that. It's just hard for me to imagine because everything looks so goofy in Pokemon. No, of but course. That's why reading about it is always so hilarious to me. I, I love it so much. I mean, I think the it, it's gotten a lot goofier as it's gotten a lot goofier as like the more the most recent generations have come out because they're not trying to be well, nobody nobody likes they're not, they're not they're not trying to make it dark they're trying to make it like this fun playful fun playful IP but I remember like like remember the the, the OG game like Gary's eradicate di- eradicate died bro that Pokemon's gone. <laughs> that, like what? Like you, you, like people were five when they found that out. It's just like, bro, it's not coming back. <laughs> you can't, you can't take it back to a Pokemon Center. It's gone. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh no. Arceus, like. Pokemon Legend of Arceus is definitely something that I'm very I'm looking forward to, and I'm I gotta give them props. 
I gotta give them props because like it usually I give the Pokemon Company a lot of shit. I I I will be honest. They're they're probably out of all of Nintendo, I especially love Nintendo. Pokemon Company International is probably the most like that's the money hungry side. They want money, man, and they'll do whatever it takes. They'll shit. They will. They will poop out all these games, all these games that are mediocre experiences. And this is, looks like something fresh, something hot out the oven that I think is gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a, a bestseller. I think to me. Now I'm glad that they they took the criticism actually because. Yeah. Cause most, cause most cup. I'm telling you, dude. Like, it's it's more so just certain games and stuff like that. You can tell, like certain games in general. Like, this is the first time Pokemon's ever gotten them that much heat until it drastically looks so much different. Oh, I was so like, tired like, of the, like the like, discourse on Virginia. Bro, I was tired of it too. I, I, was, I was tired of seeing too. that. It was every day that, especially when they released a new trailer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like people were angry. It was bad. Yes, they were just like I'm, I've known Pokemon for a million years, and this is not acceptable. But they you still remember, bought it. it for you. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like exactly. they all still bought it, still and that that's it. the thing. It's like it's it was still like a really well selling game, and so I just feel like if if that's the case, you have to speak with your wallet. Like if you don't think you're getting a product that you want to pay for, then just don't pay for it. But I feel like a lot of people still bought it anyway. I liked it, but it it was kind of. I don't even know what to say about it. <laughs> that That's the type of game that it feels like I played. It was just like, it was fine, but I'd probably never play it again. That's pretty much how I feel about Sword and Shield. It was... But I heard the DLC was good. I just, I'm not that big of a Pokemon fan to spend that much money on two DLC. No, you actually, I, I think when it came to the DLC, uh, not even the DLC, the, the game itself, Sword and Shield, you know... I like the Pokemon games, and I've bought pretty much every entry from every 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 entry from the past because I do like the, I do like those games. But I think after playing Shield, if it wasn't for the Nuzlocke, like cause I, my first playthrough of that game was through a Nuzlocke. If it wasn't for me actually playing a Nuzlocke and making it like an active challenge and making like putting some stakes on it, I think I wouldn't have really enjoyed my time because it. I looked at the game as this was Pokemon's first time going onto an actual console, so now you, limitations aren't your limitations aren't an excuse anymore. It's your t- now that it's going to a console. I'm expecting this it, like this experience. You got to make it something like not something nice, something worthwhile, so that like this jump to Switch or to a home console was something worth it. The game that we I got. I think you're missing a couple. Huh? I think you're missing a couple. Uh, there was Coliseum and XD. Those were on GameCube. I mean, you they know, were. yes. I mean, I meant like a mainline Pokemon game uh, that actually follows the formula of like beating the g- beating the gyms and then go straight, you know, go to the champion. I thought, I thought it's uh, that itself was like them making that jump was always kind of like I I never. I didn't expect it. I didn't know what to expect. And I, but I expected something so much more than what we got with Sword and Shield. Games like Coliseum and such, those were like smaller games. Those were smaller games. Which they were great games. Amazing games. But they were smaller games. And obviously, they weren't supposed to like... They weren't They weren't supposed to be groundbreaking. But when they announced Sword and Shield for the first, like, it's their first time on the Switch, baby. Or second time, if you want to count Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. But, um... If you wanted to, like, we were thinking that this is going to be the, the, the one that does it. And it really didn't. The game didn't look the didn't look the prettiest. I do fault the Switch itself. It felt like the game was lacking a lot. Uh, the gym Concept. challenge the gym challenge was definitely a very cool thing to incorporate. Cause it, I it loved gave, those, actually. Yeah. yeah, it gave it a new spin. But I think feel like aside from the gym challenge there, there really wasn't much to do or at least it didn't feel like to me there was much to do and that's it's like a pokemon game can't just you can't only it can't only be the hey here's the gyms here's the elite four because every mainline pokemon game does that you know 
you have to do something a little bit more. You have to go a little bit above and beyond if you want to like really sell it. So seeing them do this with Arce Arceus, 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 whatever you want to pronounce it, seeing them do it with this new game, it really shows me that like they're, they're taking the heat. They understand what people, they understand that what people want and if they can really nail it, that'll be so good for the franchise. I want to see that, that franchise thrive. I love, I love Pokemon. I want to see it doing well, but I almost, I almost said after the Jordan Shield, I'm like, I think I'm kind of done if the next game is just not there. And that hurts. See, I, I feel like I have to respectfully disagree with almost everything you just said. Not, I said almost, but hear me out when I say this, because I, I really do appreciate your mindset, because that's the mindset that I feel like almost everybody had going into Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. is that this is an HD console, we're getting a Pokemon game on it, and they were expecting something like grand, like something really big, and that's not what it was. And if you look at Pokemon as a series, it doesn't really change all too much from game to game like at all and so to expect something drastically different with this newer one i feel like was people's first mistake because all of the mainline series is relatively safe and then they save like the, i'm not even going to say cooler stuff but experimentation for their spin-offs like with rcs this is a spin-off and then they're doing like the big thing that they want to do with it while gen 8 was a little safer and i think that's fine but i feel like the Game first shit, problem, bro. yeah, the first problem is not maybe Gen 8 itself, but more so the pe the expectations people gave it. Because Pokemon, I don't, I do not think for a second that Pokemon is an innovator when it comes to any sort of game design there. You know, even innovating itself, like it doesn't really do anything. I feel like Mario, like, if you want a game <laughs> that, you know, will show the limitations or like what the Switch can do and something that'll be different almost every single time. Sure, Mario, but definitely not Pokemon. And so I feel like people sort of set their expectations a little bit too high with this one. And uh, it got to the best of them. Like, I don't think it's a bad game at all. Like I said, I really enjoyed my time with Sword and Shield. I just, uh, I don't feel like it had too much personality. But that's that's just my opinion. I that's the best part of Pokemon. It's just like the personality with the Pokemon and the characters and everything. And it still had it, but I wasn't too I wasn't too much of a fan of uh, Sword and Shield as like that was like my first like re like actual legit game that I actually purchased. So like you know beforehand I did like play Pokemon Red, but it was Moimon Red. So it was just like. Basically, cute anime girls replace the Pokemon. I don't care. Shut up. Um, but uh, I still played it. It was fun. You know what I mean? And that game had a lot of, like, if, just expectations for a Game Boy Advance game. Had a lot of content. Had a lot more things for me to do aside from just, like, you know, catching Mewtwo. There were other islands for me to go to, Island 1, 2, and 3, that would allow me to catch more Pokemon if I so choose to fight more trainers and, and get, a, you know, um, what's it called? The other three legendary birds or whatever. Yeah. And like there's obviously more there's obviously more than that, that that was in the game, but I still enjoyed it and I like played that game for like at least a solid like almost month of just like me just capturing all the Pokemon and getting full and content. But with Sword and Shield, my problem was is that the game went by too quickly. We're talking about like so fast. Like I beat that game in like I wasn't even trying to beat it quickly. I beat that game in like two days. And then, like, all of a sudden, after you beat the game, now the content, the extra content that you're talking about that could have been put inside the regular game, you know, throughout the first time around, they put it at the end. And it's not even that much. It's just literally getting the dog. That's, <laughs> that's, that's about it. And then you fight yeah. your rival one last time. Yeah. Like, I, th I think, like, it's, I think, like, outside of, like, you know, normal jurisdictions of, like, most Pokemon games, I, I usually go based off of, like, price instead of rate rates. I'm like... Pokemon Sword and Shield was not worth sixty dollars. That's a forty dollar game. That's a fifty dollar game at maximum. But that's a forty dollar game because of how much, yeah, for, for how the length of the game was. Like if you if you compare them and stuff like that, and you're trying to get all the shinies and you're egg hunting and stuff like that, you'll get a lot of mileage out of that game. Like no doubt, one hundred percent. But me personally, like just being a casual player, 
throughout the series for the series, it was not worth for it was not worth sixty dollars. I felt like a Mario tennis kind of deal or a Mario golf kind of a deal. Or sixty dollars like, expecting so much garbage, but it's not that's really an entirely separate conversation in itself. Though, if you really think about shut, it, you shut up! Don't start. Hey, I'm just saying because it's it's like, do you really think the amount of content that a game has justifies the price? Because I remember when Metroid Dread got announced, and you had all these little kids on Twitter being like, "It's a Metroidvania. It doesn't need to be sixty dollars." And I'm just like, dude, it, <laughs> it's Metroid Dread. I mean, I'm biased, obviously, but it's just like I see Metroid Dread, and I'm like, I'll pay sixty dollars. Like, I'm not saying I'm not saying like the contents of the game is worth sixty dollars. I'm just saying that like for an effort for a title one game, like a, a, like a first party title one game, it should be just a little bit more, like a little bit more, a little bit more options. You know what I mean? There were there were mini games that you could fish. Well, you could fish in this game too, but like or in that game too. There was just so, there was just much more to do. I think I, me personally, just comparing Red to Shield, there was just more developing plot and stuff like that, and side quests, all this other garbage that you could do, versus in Shield, where it's just like it's open. It there's a, it's a big land, sure, and you can see the actual garbage Pokemon walking around at night, and day and night cycles do actually happen. But mm-hmm. outside of that, you know, traveling all to other places, there's no real excuse for you to go back at yeah. all. I think the exploration was fun. Like, walking around the wild areas wasn't, like, it wasn't interesting. Like, even the environments, it's not even, it was that they were bland for me. Like, there was no, like, scenery, like, (laughs) I don't don't even know. There's just nothing cool to look at. Like, even in Breath of the Wild, I hate that I just brought that up. But you did this to me, and I blame you. Breath Breath of the Wild is a trap. It is a trap. It is a trap. Because you can apply it to like I, most I games. I can say anything. Let's just say Genshin Impact. I, I don't know. <laughs> just you're walking around, and even if there's nothing to do, at least the game's pretty. Like yeah. Sword and Shield wasn't like pretty. There's there's nothing that like made it stand out except for the uh, the area that had the mushrooms in it, like the glowing mushrooms. I thought that area was really cool, but it was so oh. short. It was and so I was like, short, so yeah, you didn't really have freedom to really like move around because it was like a linear path. And yeah, it was, like, it was really narrow. And I was oh, like, wow, man. I want more of it. Like if this was a whole big area that looked like that, then I would have loved that. But it was kind of just it wasn't that it was just so like condensed and limited to that one area. And it was kind of disappointing. And um, I feel like the least interesting portions of like environmental stuff was like the biggest like giant grassland giant desert sort of thing i don't know yeah they just try to hodgepodge everything together in like a very like in a very uninteresting uninteresting way and like i i i do like what uh what kendall was bringing up about how like uh, he played red and he said he felt like there was much more to do there and like i think about my experiences at least with uh the games that i have most like the most memory with were were Gen four, Gen five, and Gen six. Uh, I did play the I did play Gen two and three, and I also played one. I played one through three as well. But look, I have most times in those other gens. And like with Gen four, yeah, you had the ga- you you had the game, but then you also had you had Pokemon contests. You had the secret bases underground where you could play with your friends. There was a lot to do there. You had the you had like Mount I think it was Mount Coronet and then you had the Safari Zone where you could connect all where you could connect the older games to get to get to get newer, newer Pokemon. So that was cool. Black and white. There was like they added rotation, triple battles, they added the dream world where you could get all these get these new Pokemon. Uh, get the new Pokemon. The game felt faster and such. They added more important. They put a lot more importance into lore and all these little things. Gen six is not my favorite, but they did make they did make a lot of different. They did make add in a lot of new things. They added a lot more customization for like I mean it may be a small thing, but customization for your character that was something we never really had before. They added that in. It was the first jump to three D with with the fran- to three D with the franchise. So they. Create they created animations for all these fucking all these fucking Pokemon. Uh, they that's what they added mega they added mega evolutions. They added I think 
they added things into the game to make it feel like this was a like this was a worthwhile jump. Sword and Shield didn't really do that, you know. I think the the main the main thing the main things that were like good ideas, but maybe didn't pan out as much. They their main innovation was mostly like the Dynamaxing, Gigantamaxing, which that's pretty cool. I'll give it to I'll give it to them. Um, but in the wild area, like as you said, it's not a, it's not that the wild area was bad. It's that it could have been so much more. You know? It just wasn't really interesting. But I will say, and I think it's really funny that you brought up Gen 6, I'd much rather play Gen 8 over Gen 6. Gen 6 is you. probably... I don't, blame you. I don't blame you. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Gen, Gen 6 was like... You said Gen 8 was sort of like your time where you were just like, I don't think I... I think I'm done. I felt like that after Gen 6. Where it was just like, I probably played that for like... I don't know, a couple days, and then I completely forgot it existed. I, th- that game was just kind of soulless. <laughs> I don't even know if that's the right word, but it, I just I could not jive with Gen 6. I think I eventually did go back and beat it, but it was just because I felt bad. I was like, I bought this game, so I'm going to beat it, <laughs> and I did, but I, I didn't really get with that one, because my favorite is Gen 5. I love Gen 5. Like, I, it's not even really because of the story. It was I had spent so much time away, because just I was there since the beginning. So I had Gen One. I I actually had the Pokemon Yellow, and then the Game Boy Color that was was with it. So I had the Pikachu Game Boy, Pokemon Yellow, and then I played <laughs> Gen, Gen One and Two, and then I didn't play three or four. And then I Five was coming out, and I was like, okay, I'll I'll try another Pokemon game. And it actually was really, really good. And I was like, oh man, this one has a story. And it was like so much different about it. And then I got into that and then Black and White 2. And then Gen 6 came out and I was like, hmm. <laughs> it was like, it, yeah. it, was, it wasn't the same. It was like it, it set that standard really high. And it, it basically fell into the same trap that people did with Gen 8. Where I was just like, oh man, they're making another Pokemon game. Maybe it'll be like the other ones. And it, it was not. <laughs> All in all, uh, all in all, your expectations, this... man. That's crazy. Yeah, but um, that's why I'm only like, I feel like I'm only the most casual of, of like a Pokemon fan because it's like, I just don't really have high expectations for the series. So if something's fun, it's like, yeah, sure, I'll buy it. But it's like, you ask me what my favorite Pokemon game is, I'm gonna tell you that I like Pokemon Stadium because it has fun mini games. <laughs> I love like, Pokemon Stadium. Pokemon Favorite Stadium's game. awesome. Favorite I. I so legitimately, I do love that game, and but it's mostly because of the mini games. <laughs> so I can't really say much. Like like I said, I'm not the biggest Pokemon guy. I do like it though, and I do play all the games. I just wish that I could get into it more, but it's not really for everybody. Mm-hmm. All in all, like uh, I think that this new Arceus game is gonna be. You know, I do have high expectations. Because this game looked very appealing, and I'm very interested in going into it. Going into it day one, like I'm, I'm sold. They got me. My money, my, the money is already left my account. It's there. But uh, I'm very excited for what that game has to offer, and I hope that one, I hope the game is great. Two, I hope that if the game, if the game, game does great, maybe the Pokemon Company International looks at that and says. We need to do more of this. We need to do more of like pushing boundaries, you know, going going out there. It doesn't always have to be the craziest jumps, but you know, let's let's see them take let's see them go different directions from what we're what we're used to. And and I like that a lot. I I'm very excited for what that game has to offer. Uh aside from that, I think that was the last thing they per, they talked about at the Pokemon Presents. Uh Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes are coming out soon. I don't I don't have to spend too much time on that, but I'm excited to play Gen 4 again. I love that gen. That's one of my first gen one of the first gens I ever played and I'm ready to play it again. I'll give it I'll give it a shot. It looks pretty. I like that whole chibi chibi to like real to like real life size like transition they make. They make when they go from like overworld to battle. I think that's 
that's pretty cool. That's, a, that's kind of already what they did before. I don't know why people were yeah. complaining about that. What people were actually complaining well, about they, that. Didn't they directly say that it was just supposed to look exactly like it, how it did in the original? Not like in exactly. The original game. But, like, yeah. What, but uh, exact transition, like you're, what you just described, like that's exactly how it's supposed people, to be. People just love angling about like little design changes that realistically don't matter in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the game. It's going to have a Wind Waker SK kind of a deal where like people are going to complain about the art style of the game or the chibiness and then they're gonna miss out and the game is gonna play probably really good like wind waker for the longest time people had swept that thing underneath the rug until twilight princess came out and then they actually played it. i was like wow this is a video game i'm stupid for looking at this one tiny little design change because i thought it was gonna affect the entirety of my game like bro i didn't complain at all about like uh diamond and pearls like chibi animations or all the characters like little tiny people like i think it's cute but if you want to be stupid, go ahead. It reminded me of Link's Awakening a little bit, like the remake yes. anyway. That's that's all I could really think of when I saw how little, like tiny they were. I was just like, man, this is like Link's Awakening. I think it looks good, and I may or may not pick it up, but there's like, I don't think there's anything coming out in November, so I might as well pick it up. I mean, might as well. Because no, everything, well. yeah, everything's everything, coming out next month. Well, I was going to say in October. Because October is going to be, like, super stacked. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's like, speaking of things that we're excited <clears> for, it's like, October it starts off with Monkey Ball, which is just, and they're adding so much to that Monkey game. Ball. Monkey forgot. Ball, it, it looks insane. <laughs> it's like, there's a lot happening. And then in the exact same week, they're like, oh, Metroid Dread on Friday. And I'm like, fuck. It's like, all my money, $120 in one week just gone. And then there's the Nickelodeon All Stars coming out that month, which I'm probably gonna play. Dude, my money, my money. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah the me very too. End of that month is Mario Party, which mm, looking nice. And so October's like gonna be fat. Four uh, games, and then like, like the right month, there. And the month before, I mean, one of these are not necessarily Nintendo, but like at the beginning, <sighs> beginning of the month, Tales of Arise, which is already a high profile game, it's high profile game that people have been look, talking about. And then, early September, WarioWare. Finally. What? Well, I think the the thing I'm most excited for for September is uh, Melty Blood Type Lumina. Oh yeah, Melty Blood too. Yeah, that, that's at the very end of uh, September. So I mean, that's what I'm most excited for. But I am probably gonna pick up WarioWare too. But yeah, I mean, these next few months are gonna be really exciting. And then when we get to November, it's just kind of gonna be like Diamond and Pearl. And so I'll just be like, yeah, might as well just pick it up. It's gonna be a little bit of a dr- it's gonna be a little bit of a drought, I think. I I don't know what other cons what other big releases are coming out for for the or something to come out for the end of the year. But I think it's gonna be a little bit of a drought. But I have a very good feeling. Some you know I've been I I've been reading the winds. I've been reading the winds. Something's telling me twenty twenty two is gonna be different. Twenty twenty two is gonna be different with games. I think. Uh, I can only hope so. I mean, we're already getting Breath of the Wild too, so that's something to look forward to. But I don't think that I'll mind the drought too much because it's like when I I was like, that's four games already in October, and yeah, that's not even like that's just four games in October, bro. Like Metroid, like from like a a kid's perspective, like no parents gonna get their kids all four of those games in October. But a lot of that's gonna be spread out over the holidays. Yeah. So that's I feel like that's, baby. I can't afford that. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be fine. And then Mario Party, at least for me, that's gonna have online. That's gonna have me busy. I I don't care Forever. how long. But yeah. So Forever, I'm gonna be probably. on that for a while. And then it, yeah. if Metroid Dread is as like as great as it is, I'm probably gonna be kept playing that for like Lord knows how long, and trying to learn that game, just because that'll just be great. So I feel like I'll, I'll be occupied. Be- it's China. gonna be a, it's like there's gonna be no drought actually because yeah. like there's like eight games realistically between September and October. It's gonna and then like November too if you're getting Pokemon Di- Diamond and Pearl like that's like at least a good like eight to ten games like all together. That's first party and second party plus like there are other games too that just came out. Blue yeah. Fire, Blue Fire. I've been I'm gonna get that game tomorrow. Wait, Blue Fire is a it's like a um it's like a Legend of Zelda styled. Uh, like dungeon crawler, um, Metroidvania kind of a deal. 
and they have the art style for Wind Waker in there, and they have lots of Legend of Zelda references in that that game. And I was like, wow, this first time in a while where I've seen someone another developer just like literally just like you know I look at the game I'm like I want that. It's not a first party, so I'm gonna Blue play Fire? that. You said Blue Fire. Huh. Blue Fire. Blue Fire. There's also uh, No More Heroes three this Friday, and I'm gonna get that. That's what I'm excited for. Isn't Fuck. Shin Megami Tensei five coming out at the end of this year? Oh, that Gross. I think that's. I think that might be the other November game. Okay, never mind. Yeah, no, no, I, think, gonna... I take it back. There's no yeah, trout. Yeah. There's only uh, bangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think SMT five comes out at the beginning of November. So yeah, I'm getting that for sure. I don't care. So I, I for some reason I forgot about that game. They hadn't talked about it in so long that I keep forgetting that it exists. And now they're just showing a lot of it just randomly. So I have to look up a lot of the trailers that they posted. Yeah, that'll that'll be the November banger for sure. Nintendo's so weird because like they have like they'll have like a high profile like game and they'll just like put it in the, like the like the middle of the direct and be like oh yeah it's here it's coming I'm like what <laughs> well, like and then they'll like drop everything like they'll stop everything they're doing like okay we're dropping bombs we said nothing we said nothing to you guys for five years all right Shimagami Tensei five you have two months to relax. <laughs> this this E3 was probably one of my favorites in a long time, like legitimately. And I it was so bad because I was watching it at work, and I started like literally crying when they showed Mario. I don't even I do not care. I I, I cried when I seen Mario Party, and they said online, and then they were just like, you can save in between turns and save your online. I was just like. My my mind. Nobody should feel like that over Mario. Getting legitimately emotional, but Lord have mercy. And then I feel like it was either before or after that. I was just like new Metroid game, and then they showed the t- the freaking title. It says Metroid Dread. I went mental. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. No, like I was doing backwards know. in my car. In my chair. I was doing no, backwards in my chair. Like, this game exists. Like it. It was so great. And then all the other stuff they showed was great, too. I mean, I was like, wow, we finally get SMT5. There's just so much that they showed. And I did watch the other stuff at E3. Like, I watched the other conferences. But I wasn't, like, super excited for what I had seen. Because mm-hmm. they just show trailers, and there's no gameplay. And that bothers me. A lot. <laughs> not done. Uh-oh. Game's just up like, there. Do you really have enough clout to just show a CG trailer and be like, here's our game. But here's not our game. Because there's nothing for us to show. There's nothing. I got a me... cutscene that's three seconds long. Sonic. Yeah. Sonic. No, it's like a, a cutscene that's like five minutes long, and I'm just like, oh man, there's a. <laughs> what, what's this? I still don't know what it is, but it, it, it's there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> nothing gives me more trust issues than looking at a trailer and seeing the little caption on the bottom saying "not actual in-game footage." I hate that, bro. I hate that. That makes me want to fight, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the? F- like, come on! Don't don't bait me like that. If if, if I want to see games look pretty in action, I don't want to. S- uh, it's cool if you have like, you know, of course you can do your CG stuff to try to get people to try to get people interested, of course. But like, let me see the game. Show me the game. Show me the game. Yeah, show me the game. I need to show, see the game. Show, show me the game. Game for a thousand, please. Game for a thousand. I don't know why that happens though. It's like I think it was the end of Microsoft's. I can't remember where they showed this like this vampires. It's like shooting at people, or I don't even know. There's like people shooting at vampires, and it lasted for a really long time. And then there was just no gameplay. It was like a five minute trailer or something really long. Straight and I was just like, what is happening? Yeah, I was just like, there's, there's nothing going on. Here. Like, Vampires and zombies, and someone's opening portals yeah. and jumping through garbage. I was yeah. like, wow, that looks like a great concept, but also, what if that's not the game? Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, oh man, funny character, but that character probably isn't in the game. It's probably like a like battle royale or something weird like that. I don't know. I I just really don't like that that sort of marketing. I just want to see the game, and then if I'm interested, I might look further into it. But don't just wait. I feel like I'm wasting my time when I'm sitting, not like, watching this movie. Like, yeah, I can't get that time back. Like, I, I, I come in more... Con- I, I'm sorry. I go out more confused than I did coming in. 
because I'm just I still don't know what's happening. I think for me, it got to the point. You know, <laughs> if you guys don't know, I'm an avid. I am an avid fan of Square Enix. Kingdom Hearts is my rock. Final Fantasy is my savior. So, I was one of those people that got trapped. You know, I got trapped in the allure of Kingdom Hearts three and Final Fantasy fifteen. Not enough game. There, there was some gameplay, but not enough. You know, ever since those games hurt me, ever those those games hurt my very soul. It's ha- whenever I look at a game, I'm just like, if it's not gameplay, I don't care. I don't care if it's not but gameplay. You can, you you can, you can catch, you can pique my interest. You can pique my interest when it comes to like a game looking pretty. You got it. But if I look at gameplay and it doesn't look like what I what you showed me, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. It's literally the. I, I've been hurt too much, man. I've been hurt too yeah, much. Yeah, you got your Square Enix gameplay. You got 20 minutes of Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> 20 Come minutes, on, and then <laughs> even more Guardians of the Galaxy at the Nintendo Con. And then chaos. <laughs> Final Fantasy One. That looked so strange. Uh, 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 stranger of I was, Paradise. I, I was angry. I what was up it. with the? I, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't I get it. I didn't play the demo. I didn't play the demo. Um, but like, I heard it was actually kind of fun. I just don't understand why. Like, it has to be some rugged looking dude with his like shirt out <laughs> like it was just really weird looking i don't know i feel like if i ever go back and play final fantasy one and i get to the final boss i see the name chaos i'm just gonna be like chaos like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all i'm gonna be able to think about because of that trailer so, it's like i recognize it was final fantasy one when they said chaos i never like i know enough about the series i was like oh hey that's the final boss but also who are these guys like why are these like, guys dressed so like hipsters weird. what's going yeah. on like is like if I rec- like I didn't play Final Fantasy one, but I don't but I don't think the main the main group of people fought chaos and tank tops, you know? Yeah. Like <laughs> that, that caught me off guard. I'm like, yo, I mean, you got a nice lineup, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like going in casual does doesn't even matter. Yeah, like. <laughs> I felt like they kind of dropped the ball. Like, I don't even know what I was expecting to see, per se. But I just... I wasn't expecting that. They kind of padded it out with Guardians of the Galaxy. But I feel like the thing I'm most excited from them... It wasn't even shown at E3, but the Dragon Quest Three remake looks amazing. I really want to play that. Oh my gosh. I think Dragon Quest Three. I think the Pixel remasters for Final Fantasy... No. <laughs> that that's one thing that I'm not excited for. I'm sorry, they don't really look that great. They oh. don't. <laughs> oh, okay. They're. I'm sorry. <laughs> the music sounds. They. I heard they remixed the music, and those are bangers. I feel like I'm more excited for the music, but the uh, presentation of those games doesn't really look that great. I mean, I don't know. I I haven't played. Keep in mind, I haven't played one through six. I haven't played like the OG games because simply, they, simply put, they were just impossible for me to get. But uh, and I just like I just never got it the time. So seeing the pizza remasters, I'm just like, maybe I'm in. I'm in there. Maybe. I, I mean, if you if you never played them before, I feel like those might be the best versions to play then. Like I'm not telling you not to get them, but I'm just saying there are better ways to play. <laughs> like. You're right. And that, that's pretty much it. But six, I just recently played this year, and it's probably like a contender for my favorite Final Fantasy game. Maybe mm-hmm. it, it's it's between that and nine for me because I like nine a lot too. But six wow. just like had a lot going for it for me. Okay, there we go. That's what I thought. I was like, okay, I thought I heard a different number. I'm sorry, you know, because like six was six was a fantastic game. Final Fantasy six was like what I played that game when, when I was in high school actually. When I when Conte and every all the bean dips introduced me into emulation and stuff, <clears throat> but um, uh, don't, don't do it. It's bad. <laughs> but um, but uh, Final Fantasy VI is such a great game. Like I played it recently, like the beginning of this year, 
and it's it's a phenomenal game like legit like probably like my favorite final fantasy and like even before my first final fantasy that i got introduced to was final fantasy 13 i still like that game i, I don't like care final, i do like final fantasy 13 i people people are gonna give me people will give me flack for it because not only a lot of people yeah. like for the 13 but that game was fun i like especially <laughs> i actually like 13 too i liked it a lot but we will have to <laughs> We won't, we won't it's okay. Play. People, people are indifferent. I'm gonna be very mad if that's an SNES. If that's a, okay, good. It's not. You're gonna make me mad because if it is, Quante, do what? Don't you dare. What? I have it. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have it, and then I also have. Uh, I have four. But this is a uh, two and three in America. But yeah, I do have them both. That's but I haven't game. played for, but I do own it. So I feel kind of like a fraud because I'm holding the game in my hand, but, but I've never played it. But uh, I didn't even play six on the cartridge. I, uh, I emulated it, but that's legal because I'm holding the game right here. But wait, stop, stop. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't say you're killing uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Japanese are going to come first to the top of my apartment. <laughs> John Square Enix is going to bust down the door right now and just come take my games away. Yeah, talking about emulation, that's a rabbit hole that can go deep. I don't know. I mean, they're great games, and I feel like you you should definitely play them in their best form, especially Final Fantasy VI. I don't feel like you should play... I'm not going to say a watered-down version of it because I don't even know what it looks like, but that is probably one of the best-looking games on the Super Nintendo. And I would just play the original. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, it would be like it, like playing the mobile version of Chrono Trigger over the SNES version or the DS version. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> no, no, don't do, don't do that to yourself, please. Yeah, do do they they look crusty. Or like even the Dragon Quest remake. Those make me legitimately angry. Like when I bought them on Switch, and I was just like, oh man, I finally get to you know experience these games, and it was just crusty, like blown up sprites, and I was just like. I don't know why they do such a weird porting job on their games. That is a very good. That is a very good question. Sometimes, sometimes ports are just half-assed, and we, we and we talked about it on multiple. We talked about it on multiple multiple episodes, but like sometimes. But it's it's, like, it's something that I, it'll always get brought back up because I I do agree with the notion that with emulation it's like it's a service issue. It's like sure enough, the games are available, but why are they so like bad? <laughs> like, why is the best version still the original? Like, you know how much this costs? When I bought it, this was like almost a hundred dollars, and I didn't buy it online. This is just from like a mom and pop shop, and they discounted me, and it was still almost like a hundred dollars. Nobody's gonna want to pay a hundred dollars for this game. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Unless you're me, unless you're stupid. Look at this room. This is a future-proof virgin room. Nobody, like... Oh, my God. It, it's on lock like, forever. Like, nobody dude, who be like, oh, how much did you pay for all this? I'm, I, I do not want to disclose that. I'm sorry. I don't even have a, as big of a collection as I want, but I, the money that I've sank into everything I have is too much. So... If, it, if I'm going to want to pay for it on a service like Steam, you better be giving me, like, something good to where I can experience it to the best of my ability, because Lord have mercy. Like, I'm not even giving that money to Square. It's just some... Uh, mom, and goes pop. To mom and pop. Yes, <laughs> yeah. bro. I, 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 I've said this a million times. If I have to make an argument with someone that's, a like, a Nintendo fan, it's like, yeah, sure, bro. Like, all oh, emulation's bad. I'm sorry, I can't I can't purchase, I can't play Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver I want to. Oh, then why don't you buy the game? You should buy the game because you know it belongs to Nintendo. No, it doesn't. They stopped printing that shit a long time ago. I gotta drive five hours all the way to the other side of Florida, you know, California, where I meet the where I meet the boy that says, fuck the virus, the government's full of shit, and he asked for four hundred dollars for that game in mint condition. That game, that money does not go to Nintendo. That money doesn't even go to, 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 to Game Freak. It goes straight to that this goes straight to that boy's pocket. It, it, what what wait what game did you just say cost four hundred dollars? Oh, this uh, it's just an example. It wasn't like an actual. Oh, like, I was yeah. like, he just, he just exaggerated. Just like, yo, 
that's it. Just an example. Just an example. But I'm I'm serious though. Like people will people will nick like people that know the value of games will shake you down nickel and dime because they know that they're not getting printed anymore and they know that collectors will get them. Either are people that want to buy it. Bro, punch out, right? I live in Dookie Land. I live in Fort Myers. I live in Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> The newly wed and the nearly dead city. You mean to tell me that Punch Out, a game that came out on the weed, is sold out here? Punch Out. Like when I like everyone had no one bought like nobody buys video games here at all. Everyone that was a weird mo- uh, that was a weird kid growing up in Dookie Land, which they were, are now adults now and they're collecting video games. So now it's impossible to find Punch Out at any GameStop store or any store in general. You have to go to Mom and Pop or the Flea Masters. Because it doesn't exist, like straight up, like game preservation is a problem, and that game came out like a decade ago. What? I can't find it, but I also the NES version costs a lot of money too. I don't even have it. I can't remember exactly how much it costs, but I didn't buy it because I was just like, man, that's a lot of money. It's like how I couldn't yeah. justify buying Earthbound. I want that game so bad. I love that game. Oh, and every time I went to that store, it doesn't exist now. Like, rest in peace, that store. But I loved it so much. And i go in there, and it would just be like a holy grail. Like, they'd sit it by itself for the majority of the time. You go and you see Earthbound, and I'm like, dang. It's like, I want that game. And then you see the price, and you're like, dang. I can't have that game. <laughs> it's like two hundred dollars or more almost every it's single cooler. time, and I'm just like, man, I love Earthbound, but do I love it a much? Do I know love it enough to spend two hundred dollars on it? And the answer is yes and no, because sometimes I was so close, but I'm just like, this would be really destructive. <laughs> but it's like if you're gonna collect stuff, like you gotta be willing to do stuff like that. You gotta go all time. in, bro. Like if, if it was me, yeah. I'd have to go all in. It's like, all right, fuck it, I want it all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, be- like I just recently, I'm probably not gonna go grab it, but I I got a bunch of Dreamcast stuff. Like my friend, he went on like the Facebook Marketplace and found a Dreamcast for like a hundred dollars, and it had a bunch of games. And I went and looked at seeing how some of, how much some of those games are. And Lord have mercy, Dreamcast games are expensive. And so I, I don't think I could ever build up more than I have now for that, because that's crazy. Like, Power Stone? Good lord. <laughs> it's like, Power Stone. It's oh too much god. money. Like, oh my gosh. I, I couldn't even imagine going into that or Sega Saturn. Holy. Mm. Bro, because most of those games on that console were arcade games. Yeah. That, that would just port it over. And they yeah. ran smooth. Power Stone, ooh, ooh. We can talk about Power Stone. Power Stone is like my, one of my favorite games of all time. Ooh. See, I want to play You're it. You're going to pay 500 bucks. Like, like it, it, it always looked cool to me, and I want to play it, but I can't buy it. <laughs> and I don't, if it was released, I just don't know. There's probably a way for me to play it easily, but I'm just like, I kind of want to play it on its original console, and I can't do that, <laughs> and it kind of sucks. But oh, I you do at come least down have, here. <laughs> at least have SA1 and 2. Or Sonic Adventure one and two. You can come down here to Florida and go to Flint's arcade and they have Power Stone they one have, and two cabinets. They do also Sonic Stone. the Fighter Cabinet. It's it blew oh, my mind. <laughs> yeah, I would love to play that like, you know, in real in person, like not on console. That would seem like it'd be a fun time. For Sonic the Fighter specifically, anyway. I know I would go to uh, you know, I'll go we went to arcade Odyssey for tournaments, for Smash tournaments. But um I went there a couple. I went there a couple of times, and I went there a couple of times because I just whether I just wanted to go for fun and such. And like I would play on like a, I was playing on a on a Street Fighter Third Strike cabinet, and I'm like, this game's so beautiful, this game's so good, <laughs> it, everything's so fluid, all the movements, all the the music, it's just it's there, and it, it's just like. It breaks my heart that there's no way that I can play this game or no way that I can play this game outside from paying money on an arcade to go here because it's like it's such a hassle to just find and it's just expensive to play. You know, one game that I've uh, one game that I've been dying I've been dying to play, which I'll probably just emulate it. I'll probably just emulate it, call it a day. <laughs> Paper Mar- Paper Mario and a Thousand Year Door. You've never played TTYD? Oh, 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 hear me out, hear me out. Oh my god. It's not that I've never played it. It's not that I've never played it. It's the fact that I have never beaten the game. 
Because I have always been cursed to not beat that game. Some, some kind of force prevents me from beating the game. It's happened on two occasions. The first occasion, before, back when I was younger, my mom would do it. She would do a certain insurance work with a friend on the, just to help her out on the weekends, you know? So I would go over to that job. Every once in a while, she would bring in her little cousin, and her little cousin would bring in a GameCube or a PlayStation. Uh, if he brought the PlayStation, it would be Kingdom Hearts 2. If he brought the GameCube, it would be Mario, Mario and the Thousand Year Door. So naturally, we both play the games together. Like, we'll do like, oh, if one of us dies, we'll swap off the controller and stuff like that. But sometimes he would just leave it there, you know? He would just leave it. You'll have the GameCube there for a couple weeks. I'm like, bet. So I was playing my little file of Thousand Year Door. I would get to the point where I would, uh, I would usually get to the point where I would meet the Bob, the Bob on partner. I forgot the name. I forgot his name. Forgot Bobbery. His name. Bobbery. Bobbery. I'll get I'll get Bobbery. And then the next week I came back. I'm like, oh, I'm on my way. Next week I came back. Never saw the GameCube again. Cause he talked he took it back. And he stopped coming, he stopped coming over on weekends. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Then I had I had another friend. I had another friend that let me borrow the game. Let me borrow the game. Uh he's just like, hey man, uh here you can you can borrow it, but eventually I gotta, I gotta get it. I gotta get it back. I'm like, yeah, sure. Once again, I get to the part where I get Bobbery. I play with him for a little bit. And he says, "Hey man, I need the game back." And I'm like, "Are you, are you sure you need the game back?" He's like, "Yeah, I need the game back." You didn't let me borrow a game after that. Um, then, then I had another friend, and then another third friend that. Let me he let me borrow the game. He says, "Yeah, my game's my game's messed up. My game's messed up." I'm just like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Play it and you'll find out." I'm like, "What do you mean by that?" So we play it. Now this time, it, now this time, it wasn't at Bobbery. It wasn't at Bobbery. It was in the fourth area where you meet, or it's either the fourth, third, or fourth area where you meet Dupless. You know, that's chapter, chapter four. four. Chapter four. Okay, cool. So. I'm doing the I'm doing everything. I'm like, okay, this is easy. I know exactly what I need to do. You get to the point where you gotta talk, like you gotta input Duplis's name, you know? Oh no, I know what happens. <laughs> you input Duplis's name, the game goes black. <laughs> the game goes a black screen. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I reset. Get to the same point, put in Duplis's name, black screen. Black screen, black screen, black screen. I don't know what's wrong, what was wrong with this game, but it would not let me get past Duplis. And that was the last straw. I said, screw it. I'm not playing this game. I'm going to have to buy my own. And then at that point, I was a fifth grader. $70 for, $70 for a game? Can't pay that. Can't afford that. No, sir. Can't afford seventy dollars. I'm a I'm a fifth grader. I'm a boy. <laughs> I'm only, I, I'm a little boy. I can't I can't afford that. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So the reason why I brought up Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is because I've tried on so many occasions to beat that game, but I have I can't, man. I can't. I can't. I want. I want to beat it so bad, and I'm just gonna have to go back to the to the. I'm just gonna have to emulate it. It's fine. It's fine. But, I mean, they've never re-released it. I, there's I nothing know. you can do. Like the, 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 they, can, they have. They rarely re-release GameCube games. Let alone like, where's the N64 stuff on the Switch? I, I don't I, know. <laughs> like I know, but the I, problem. The problem to me is the problem to me is like. If, if, look, look behind. It's not the it's not the biggest library, but I, have, I like to I like to buy my games, have them physical, have them there, so I can showcase. Cause I take pride in my fucking games. I love them shits, but like when it when I can't, it's always a bad feel for me. It's always a bad feel for me when I can't have a physical game to put there on the shelf. I'll deal with digital games, but sometimes it's just easier to have. But like, 
I want to see it there. I want to look at it and say, you're looking kind of cute today. Like, I really it's want that. Game. Play. I, I really do get that. I mean, I got too much. I need another shelf. It's becoming bad. I need a, I, yeah, I need another shelf. I, I need another shelf, like right now. Dude, look at this shit. Look at all these Switch games. Like I, I don't even. I, I've never had this many like title games for a console in my life, dude. Now you and can the see mo- mine. Right? More over there. <laughs> yeah, it's the same mine. Like if you sort of look where my arm is, look at all that. Yeah, that, all that red, all that red. Yeah. And then, and then you see like it's like right, right at the. I don't know. You can see like them on the side because I, can I can't. See them on the side of the title. Yeah. So I, it's like I have so much on that particular shelf, and I'm just like stacking them sideways now because too much and too much um, bro i have yeah. too much i don't want to my camera I have a whole bunch of stuff downloaded too like i have a lot of games on the switch i wasn't like expecting that i'm not gonna <laughs> lie because uh, compared to like my wii u library where i barely have anything and then my switch is just like exponential compared to that yeah. and then i have like too many instances where I have a physical and digital game because I'm really dumb, like with Torna for the uh, Xenoblade 2. <laughs> I have that physically and digitally. I have Smash Brothers physically and digitally. Fire Emblem Three Houses for some reason, because I think I accidentally bought it twice. But I have it, <laughs> and so I don't know. Or just for certain games, if I want to get it like on the launch at like 12 o'clock just to play it. Uh, so just still buy it digitally or physically because it feels wrong to not have it physically. So I don't know. I I think the next step, you know, I you know I feel like I, I don't make a lot of money, but one day I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be filthy rich. What am I like? I'm gonna just spend useless amounts of money on is having a my full library physical. I love having physical physical games and like I was and I and. I, I was already. I'm prepared to go into the rabbit hole of getting all, of like committing myself to finding a way to get all my games and steel books. I like them, bro. And steel books. Steel Man. Books, that, that's a rabbit. That's a dangerous rabbit hole. But that's crazy. Yeah, I love. I, I love having art and, and like unique things. Like, I like. I like having them all unique and it's so cool. But at the end of the day. Developers, if you're watching this, I hope you're watching this. I hope you guys are liking it and you're listening, bro. Re-release your fucking games, bro. Don't if if you if you know if you know that you can't that you're not gonna sell them again. Just make them easier for us to get, bro. Make it easy. Come on, do do me a solid, man. Let me beat ten thousand year door. Give me the thousand year door. Crazy. I'll pay good money. Good money. <laughs> It's crazy because it's it's realistically, and I'm not even kidding when I say this, it's only a Nintendo thing. Like, no, literally every other company finds a way to preserve the game in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's good or bad, you can still purchase the game. I found that you can buy Banjo 1 and 2 on the Microsoft Live Party thing for like $20 a month to rent out for, for games and stuff like that. And you can physically buy them for like, it was on sale like last week for $5. Well, like, they still have, uh, they have Rare Replay too. I mean, they, 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 are, too. Yeah, they re-released those games already. Yeah. But I, I don't really have any need for those because I have Banjo yeah, 1 and copy. Or, yeah, yeah, Banjo, Kazooie, and Tui on my 64. So I don't really feel the need to buy those again. I don't but have, I, I also love Banjo. Those, so I don't really... I needed those when I had my N sixty four because those it's, are like it's, it's a Nintendo game. It's a Nintendo issue. Because let me tell you something, dude. Let me tell you something. I got I got Skyward Sword right here from Why? GameStop that I bought. I bought that- this. No, I, I listen. If you don't listen, you're stupid. All right. So <laughs> I bought this game. <laughs> I bought this game in 2018, 2019 when a GameStop was going out of business. This game cost me nineteen dollars after after the uh, after the difference of the you know everything must go. This is Skyward Sword, brand new game, right? New video game. Look at me. This was sixty dollars. These are realistically the same game. The only difference is, is that this one is slightly like you see how like I lifted my arm a little bit. This was slightly better than this one. 
slightly better. And if you got the amiibo, I, I guarantee it'll go from here to here. That's all I gotta say. Just if this was accessible on a digital scale, and which is not, it's not by the way, fun fact, it's not. But if it was, this it is now exist. because you're holding it in your other hand. Exactly. They can buy that on an accessible. They can buy this on digital. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? But I need sixty dollars, bro. And look at me, I got all the money in my put in my safe. I hate Nintendo, man. This I'm tired of this shit. This I I don't know. There's cool stuff sometimes. I like this. Say fifty dollars. Yes. No, it was like twenty dollars. Yeah. Like they they release cool stuff sometimes. And then there's the I can't find it anywhere, but there's like a they really re released Super Mario Adventures, which was like a cool comic for Mario. Like there's some stuff sometimes, but like there's not enough. I just wanna play these games. I want other people to play the games. If anything, it's like half the stuff that I want I have already. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I want my friend to play something like you and T T U I D, it's like, alright, how do I get him to play it? played it on dolphin i guess it's like i i'm not gonna lie i don't have the metroid prime trilogy i just emulated all three of those <laughs> it's like how am i supposed to get them when it like the the prime trilogy itself is already super expensive i guess i could play it on wii u but i i, I guess i really don't have an excuse because i still have my wii u <laughs> but i also don't want to play my wii u, so i just emulated them but, I mean, that's kind of how they expect you to play most of those games. Like, all the other Metroid games, like, how am I going to get a good friend to play Zero Mission or Fusion? Um, pull out your Wii U, kids! We're going to play some Metroid today. Yay! Nobody's going to want to do that. <laughs> exactly. Like, put, put it all on your latest console so everybody can play them, and then you don't really have that problem anymore. I know. But, until then... I hope they hear. I hope they hear our cries. I hope they hear our pleas. Cause, man, I want to beat the. I want to beat the dogs at your door. I just want that game. I just want to beat that game. I just, I just want. I, I really just want them to re-release. I'll just re-release the game. These games. There's no reason for them to. There's no reason for them to not be available. There's no reason for a lot of these games not to be available. That's just, that's actually free money. That's free money. I print, printing would money. Hey, I would pay if you were to tell me that I could play like, hey, we can open up a Game Boy, Game, Game, Game Boy, Game, Game, Game Cube, Game, Nintendo GameCube library of games, and all of them are forty dollars. You think I'd bat an eye? You think I'd bat an eye? I wouldn't bat an eye. I wouldn't buy an eye for a second. I hate that they've never re-released Game Boy games, because this is all I have. It's like, and they're not really too expensive, but this screen is so small. You know how bad this screen is? You can't see anything on this screen. <laughs> you are, this, this is the ultimate struggle. Bro, it, 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 the glare, the glare yeah, off the screen. So you can't see anything right now. Like, the room could be fully lit. Everything is just vivid you know you get 2020 vision you still can't see anything on here it's so bad and it, it, they have it like rarely re-release game boy advance games they did on the wii u but it's like there's not that many and it's like it this has a game boy color game in it so it's like it's even smaller unless i press the r button and then it's just like Wide shot. Tiny wide screen. Yeah. <laughs> like Mario, Mario, wide screen. Mario grew three sizes that day, and suddenly he's just all the way across the screen. It's so bad. Pretty and much, not everybody's going to have money for one of these, or to mod them for anything. I wanted one that had, like, a backlight in it and everything, but no, that's just a standard one that somebody just randomly gave me for my birthday, like, th- last year. But, like, they need to re-release more. I don't know why I went over there and grabbed that, but I'm just angry now. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, oh no, that, that I think that's a, that's a good po- that's a good point to because we're all kind of we're all kind of heated. I can I can keep this going on for a long time, but it's just making me mad. It's just making me upset. So I think we're gonna end it here, folks. Once again, Nintendo, uh, Sony, Microsoft, you guys are doing better, but Nintendo. 
Release your games. Release your games. Don't keep me hanging. Let me play the Thousand Year Door. And round table and the round table, everybody, the panel. Black Eye Gamer. Tell everybody where they can find you if they want to hear you speak and scream about not re-releasing games. I can't do it. <laughs> Um, you can find me at Black Eye, Dr. Black Eye Gamer on Twitter, at Dr. Black Eye Gamer. And you can also find me on Twitch. I'm streaming tomorrow at 10.30. I'll be streaming the entirety of Sonic Adventure in one sitting and probably be talking about it with James and whoever else wants to come into the chat. That's all I got. All right. Uh, you heard it there. You're going to see him tomorrow at 10.30 EST. Uh, doing, to- doing Sonic Adventure 2, you said? Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure. There we go. Just yeah, I'm gonna do a quick glance over the game real quick before I actually like finalize my script before I'm like done with everything. If there's anything I can like change the topic. Go, go for it. Go for it. And then Lore Master King Kawante, where can they find you if they want to hear you scream and shout about not releasing games? You can find me on YouTube.com/slash The Black Guy Gamer. Because I formally challenged him to a Sonic Mania race as we speak. He didn't know about it, but now he does know about it. And I just want him to evaporate with that Baconator in his mouth. Yeah? Yeah. yeah I ate the whole Baconator in one bite. I bet it was good, wasn't it? It'll be even better once you're, you you lost in Sonic Mania. All right. Or any, any of the classic Sonic games. I don't care which one. We'll start with Mania, since you challenged me. I'm not we'll start. We we'll start with Mania, the most fun well, one. Well, my reason, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And then loser, we'll we'll do the pepper thing. See, my original thought was to do a relay race of all the classic games, and then loser of that particular game has to eat pepper, and then we just keep going until one of us dies. See, the, here at the gamers grind, we are we are real gamers. We put all we put it all on the line. They're betting their souls. They are betting their souls. It, it, it's a sequel to our Super Mario World race. So, oh, we'll fun fact, I wasn't that far behind you. you. Oh, I hate. I watched that thing again and synced it up. and was not that far behind. I was like a good like ten minutes behind. Ten, that's a <laughs> lot of time. Minutes. What do you mean? I, yeah. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> What do you mean that's not that far behind? After you after you beat the game, I stopped caring. I stopped caring. The drive just disappeared. I kept dying. You know what? I hope you for I'm gonna I'm gonna put my That's it! I'm put my foot up your ass. <laughs> Dickhead. Alright. See me in my fucking land. If you guys wanna watch that, please show some love to Black Eye Gamer on YouTube, the Black Eye Gamer, if I remember correctly. Or the doctor. This uh, Black Eye Gamer on YouTube. Black Eye Gamer on YouTube. And if you guys, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, if you guys enjoy what we do here, us talking about, uh, talking about the games we love, the things we want to see in the gaming industry, if you like it all, please show some love to the Gamers Grind. We are on YouTube, the Gamers Grind. We are on, you can follow me on Twitter, tw- uh, twitter.com slash Choco Taco FGC. And you can find me on Twitch, Twitch.tv slash Choco Taco FGC. This has been the Gamers Grind episode 7. And we will be seeing you guys next time when the grind continues. Peace out.